Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor, where we're going to talk about something very important. It's going to be kind of a short lesson, but it's a very important topic, so you need to watch this one really carefully, and that's the topic of work. Uh, in physics, work has a very specific definition. Everybody has their own definition of work in real life. Most of the time, people don't like to do work, okay? But in physics, we define work very, very specifically. Um, let me ask you a question. Pretend this were a um, I don't know, a bowling ball, a bowling ball, something pretty heavy, okay? And I were to hold that bowling ball in my hand for five minutes, ten minutes, three hours, a hundred hours, three weeks, let's say. Let's say I were to hold that bowling ball very steady for a year, okay, in my hand. I think most of us would all agree that we're doing work, right? Because it takes some effort to hold that ball up, okay? Turns out in physics you're not doing any work when you do that, and I will explain to you exactly why that's the case, but in order to understand that, we need to talk about the definition of the term work, and that's what we're going to do right now. Let's go ahead and define the, the term work in terms of uh, physics, and then I think you'll understand why. What we're going to talk about in this section is the concept of work, so that's why I'm going to write that right there. Very simply, the, the, uh, the work done on an object okay, is equal to the force applied to the object times the distance traveled by the object where um, F and D are in the same direction. Okay, what do I mean by that? Uh, I'm going to just draw a quick uh, block here. Okay, so there's some block I'm trying to move. I'm going to do work on this block, right? So let's say I apply some force to the block. So I'm going to apply some force. That's the force I'm talking about here. And then, you know, eventually that block's going to move because I'm pushing on it after all. And the block is going to move some distance, okay, over to the right. Okay, so I'm, move, I'm pushing on this block with some force. Okay, the, the block accelerates, okay, and moves because of that. And it goes through some distance. And the entire way... Um, the entire time this block is moving from point to point, I'm still pushing on it with that force. So as the block moves, I'm still pushing on it as it moves, okay? And it moves through some distance d, so when you multiply force times distance, you get the concept of work. And that is exactly why if I hold a bowling ball in my hand for two weeks, I don't do any work on it in terms of physics. The reason is, if I hold the ball, I don't move the ball any distance d. So if you, you can hold a bulldozer in your arms if you want to, you're applying a force to that bulldozer, obviously because it's because you have to hold it up, right? But unless something moves in physics, you're not actually doing any work on it. And that's very, very important. The other really important thing to mention about this is that the force that you use in this equation is the force in the direction of the motion that you uh, that you travel, okay? So let me give you an example of of when the situation wouldn't be quite so simple as this and explain to you what I mean when I say it has to be the force, the component of the force in the direction of motion. Let's say I had another block here. Okay, same same block, okay, no, no different. Okay, but let's say this time I apply a force down at an angle. So here's the force and because I'm applying it at an downward, I have some angle theta. I'm pushing the block down, okay? Well, obviously, the block is still probably going to move, okay? And obviously, I'm kind of making the assumption that you understand that the block is at rest on some, some floor, so it's not like in space or anything. So when I push down on this guy, you know, again, it's a vector. Force is a vector. Some of the force that I'm pushing is going to be pushing the block down, the component in the vertical direction, and some of this force is going to be actually acting in this direction, the component of the force in this direction. So again... The, um, the block will move through some distance, okay? Here, now in my definition of work, I told you that the force that you put into this equation needs to be in the direction of the distance. So the, the only force that counts is the force that actually is used to move the block over, over some uh, distance. So how would you use this information over here when you have this angle? Well, in this case, the work would simply be equal to the component of the force in the direction of motion. Now, I use the term component on purpose, okay? How would you calculate the component of the force F acting in this direction? Well, by now, hopefully you would understand that that's F times cosine of theta because 
uh, cosine gives you the x projection of a vector, and since that's what we're interested in here, take the cosine of that, multiply by f, and that gives you the force in the direction of uh, x there, and then you just, again, multiply by d. Okay? Um, so the two equations really are no different. I gave you a general equation. I said it's force times distance. Just make sure that the force that you use, like I drew here, was in the direction of the distance you traveled. And if you, if you have a force that's not necessarily in the, in the direction that you're interested in, just simply take the component of it, f cosine theta in this case, and then you'll have the component of the force in that direction. You just multiply by d and you get the work done. Okay, the, uh, the unit of work, Okay, you may have heard of this, is joules, or uh, if you're going to write it as a symbol there, you'd have, uh, you'd have a J there, okay? So we deal with meters, we deal with seconds, we deal with kilograms. Those are some of the things we've been talking about. Meters per second, meters per second squared, and then we have the unit of work, which is joules. That's another fundamental unit in physics that you're going to deal with over and over again. Uh, it's going to pop up again and again in other topics. So the unit of joules is what we calculate here. So now you can say with certainty that when you push something or you move something and you exert some force on it, and that guy moves, then you're doing work on it, and you can very simply and very easily calculate the, um, the work that you actually exert. And notice that you can push all day if you have a 150 ton safe on the floor, I can push it all day, but unless that safe moves, I don't do any work on it. That's just the fundamental fact. So let's go ahead and work a problem to expand on this stuff. You have some tugboat, and uh, it pulls another uh, ship at a force, a constant force of 5 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Uh, it's moving constant speed through a harbor. How much work does the tugboat do on the ship if they move a distance of 3 kilometers? So what you have here, always draw a picture. You have some boat, some ship, and let's say it's just it's stuck out there in the ocean, and this is the top view of the ship, okay? And then I have some smaller tugboat, okay, and it's pulling. Notice I set the problem up so that the tugboat is pulling the ship directly in front of it, okay? And then some time later, okay, the tug the uh, giant ship is moved by the tugboat, okay? So some time later, our our entire system moves over to the right. And in the problem, you were told that it moves three kilometers, okay, like this, okay. And you're also told that the force that the tugboat actually is able to pull with is five times 10 to the three newtons, okay. So 5,000 newtons, five times 10 to the three means you take five, you multiply by 10 to the three, 10 to the three is 1,000, and so it's five times 1,000, so that's 5,000 newtons, okay. And the question is, what is the work done? Okay, the, um, the big picture is the tugboat is pulling with this force and it's doing some work on this gigantic ship and it's doing some work because it's pulling with some force and the, the ship is moving through some distance. So it's very simple. The formula that we just talked about is the force times the distance. And I also told you that you have to make sure that the force is in the direction of the distance that you're traveling. In this case, there's no angle, okay, so it's a pretty simple problem. You're moving through some distance, you're pulling with some force through that distance, so it's real simple. You just take force times distance, okay? But um, I've been trying to teach you through all of this stuff that you have to have consistent units, okay? You need to learn the consistent units, and hopefully you've been able to do that so far. We deal with seconds, we deal with uh, meters, we deal with... Um, Newtons, we deal with joules. Okay, those are the fundamental units. Everything else are, are really built upon those, okay? In this case, you're given a kilometer and a newton, and those units aren't compatible. So you need to convert kilometers to meters because meter is the basic unit that we want to deal with. So in case you can't do that in your head, if you were going to actually do this by writing it down, you'd have three kilometers. You have to put some conversion factor. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. I put the kilometers on the bottom because I want it to cancel. I'm left with meters. So then you just say 3 times 1,000 is 3,000 kilometers. Okay? Which is really simply what the definition of a kilometer is. So you probably could do that. Actually, I made a mistake here. It's 3,000 meters, obviously. Um, you probably could do that in your head there. Okay? 
So the work is simply the force times the distance. The force is 5 times 10 to the 3, or you could just put 5,000, it's really the same number, okay, times 3,000 meters, okay. And in the end, you're going to get a big number that's most easily written as uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 7 joules. Okay? 1.5 times 10 to the 7 joules. Now, this is the answer. Okay? Um, sometimes the books want you to write it in terms of kilojoules because you, you, might, you might have heard in your, uh, on your electric bill they deal with in kilowatts or kilowatt hours. It's just a bigger unit. So if you wanted to express that in kilojoules, it would just be 1.5 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules, okay? So it's 1.5 times 10 to the 4 thousand joules, okay? I just did a little conversion there. But really, this is really the answer. So this is the work done on the tugboat, I mean, from the tugboat to the giant boat, okay? Well, let's go ahead and work another problem, which will be just a little bit more complicated, but again, not too complicated. And the problem will be as follows. You have a shopping cart, and you're pushing on that shopping cart down at an angle of 25 degrees with a force of 35 newtons. And you want to find the uh, work done as you move down a 50 meter aisle. So you have this shopping cart. Okay. This is a shopping cart, believe it or not. And um, I'm pushing down on this shopping cart with a force of 35 newtons. Okay. And the angle is 25 degrees. Okay? Now when you do that, obviously there's a floor here, okay? So when you do that, you're gonna push the shopping cart, not very efficiently, but you're gonna push the shopping cart to the right, so sometime later you're gonna have this guy over here, like this, and uh, it's going to be pushed, uh, it says a 50 meter aisle. That's a shopping aisle, okay? So really what you're trying to find is the work. Okay, we already said that work is force times distance, but in this case the force is not in the direction of motion fully anyway. I mean, it's pointed downwards, so some of the force is going to push down, the component down, and some of the force is going to push over to the right. So the general formula is F times cosine of theta times D. Now, don't memorize these equations, okay? I mean, I know I tell you that, and it's kind of hard for you not to try to memorize them, but you got to understand what is this doing. You're trying to find the coefficient or the, the component of the force vector in the direction of motion. So just sanity check it and make sure it's doing what you want it to do. If I take the cosine of this angle, then it will give me the projection of this vector in the x direction. Multiply by 35 is exactly what we want. So this is going to be the component of the force in the x direction. The distance is 50, so that, that checks out and gives me a sanity check. So what I will have is 35 times the cosine of 25 degrees, and the distance is simply 50 meters, okay? So when you do all of this, and you take the cosine 25, multiply by 35, multiply by 50, you'll get 1,586 joules, or roughly 1.6 kilojoules, okay? So I can just move the decimal place three points to the left because this is a bigger unit over here, okay? And if you don't know how to do that, you could just simply say, okay, one, five, eight, six joules. If you wanted to convert to kilojoules, uh, which you don't have to do, but if you did, then you'd say, okay, one kilojoule is 1,000 joules. And I'm canceling the joules. And what you're doing is you're dividing by 1,000. That's why the decimal point moves three points to the left. And so you're left with kilojoules.